So I think it's uh, it's now time to start. You should be here now. Uh, so hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for attending our webinar. Uh, it's good to see uh, you uh, all connected here. Uh, my name is uh, Hamori Manje. I'm a product line developer in GTT and uh, especially dealing with the uh, on-shop products. Uh, but let me introduce you my colleague and co-speaker today, Edouard Shen. Edouard. Thank you, Amri. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Edward Chen, uh, business development manager working for GTT China. Uh, it is a great pleasure to share with you all um, this very first uh, onshore memory tank project uh, in China. Uh, today, we will see many photos from the project, and I will tell you the story how this memory tank using GTT technology was built. Yeah, so together, we're going to, to present you how membrane technology is now back on the uh, onshore market through uh, this important milestone we overcome last month. Uh, so I'm talking of the commissioning of the world's first new GST generation uh, of uh, onshore LNG tank. Uh, it happened in the uh, Asian city, so in China. Uh, but before we start, uh, please note that we also want to hear from you. So uh, we arrange a, a Q&A session and a poll session at the end of this presentation. Uh, so please do not hesitate to write down your question uh, during the presentation. So in the dedicated uh, Q&A uh, chat box you know, in, team, in uh, Zoom. And uh, at any time, you can write this question and we will answer them at the end. Uh, also note that uh, this webinar is being recorded and the recording will be available on demand. So we are now moving to our today's agenda. Uh, so I will now switch off my camera so you can have the full presentation screen and we will put them back uh, during the Q&A session. So, um, Today's topic is uh, particularly of interest to those of you who are looking for a competitive solution for onshore energy storage. Um, our presentation will first go through a, a rapid description and introduction to the GST technology itself. And then we will go to the main part of this presentation, which is uh, the presentation of a last born onshore tank through many pictures taken during the erection of it. At the end and before the conclusion of presentation, I will share some uh, status on the other project and some uh, uh, technology improvements. So now let's have a look to what is a uh, more in detail uh, GST technology and, uh, and to understand why uh, this tank delivery is an important step and a game changer for the LNG, uh, LNG onshore market. So what is GST tank? So it's, uh, it's composed of a concrete, um, so a concrete slab, concrete wall, and a concrete dome roof. The, in the inner part of this concrete, uh, on the wall on the bottom, uh, we install a polymeric coating, so in green here on this picture. Uh, and then on this polymeric coating, which is also called moisture barrier, um, we have the insulation bonded, uh, and uh, above this insulation, to complete the insulation, we have a membrane, a primary membrane made of stainless steel. And this stainless steel is in contact with the LNG. On the top of the tank, the uh, concrete is protected uh, by a carbon uh, steel liner, and, uh, and, an ins and the insulation is uh, realized through a suspended deck uh, isolated with a glass wall. To have, a, of course, an operational tank, uh, we have a charging and discharging piping, so here, so all connected from the top of the tank. Uh, and also, uh, we have a inst instrumentation to monitor, uh, to, to be able to manage the tank, and also to monitor the insulation 
system. So just to keep in mind that uh, GST has a, a long history as it's a uh, it have been first built in the 1972. Uh, so that was the first tax build. So it's 15 years ago and still in service. However, since then many improvements been done and uh, one is including uh, the tank corner protection, uh, which have been added and which enable uh, to qualify GST as a uh, full containment technology, so as with the same level of safety than the 9% nickel tank. So what is the membrane made of? We saw, we saw before a global view, but what is the membrane itself? So the technology used coming from the uh, Mark III technology used on LNG vessels, and it benefits from its experience as there is also uh, almost uh, 400 uh, vessels at sea nowadays. You can see on this slide so, uh, the inside of the tank. And um, okay, uh, yeah, so that's uh, the insulation part on the top part of the wall, and then the insulation on the bottom part of the tank. So if we go in some detail, so we have first the primary membrane, which is composed of stainless steel. And thanks to the corrugation, it behaves like billows, so uh, allowing free contraction and expansion. So thermal stress are, uh, are almost zero in this um, primary membrane. The insulation is made of uh, polyurethane foam. And uh, the density uh, of, uh, of this foam is adapted to the inner pressure. So depending on the tank height, uh, et cetera, on the conditions, and we adapt the, this density to the different conditions. Then uh, the, this uh, insulation is uh, uh, bonded on the wall through the mastic, which enables to have a, a good flatness of the insulation for the primary membrane. In between the concrete and the mastic, there are uh, a moisture barrier to uh, protect the insulation from any water ingress from outside. Um, so on the bottom part of the tank, there is an additional element, which is a thermal corner protection. So it's a composite material uh, installed in between the different foam layer, and, uh, which uh, enable the protection of the, of the concrete part in case of any leakage, liquid leakage from the primary barrier. Um, we can mention that the different components uh, are provided by the same supplier and the insulation component from the Mark III vessels. Uh, the design, uh, an arrangement is optimized to limit the number of components. So with only two different shapes, you can see the different panel shape here. Uh, so there are, there are triangular one and rectangular one. 95% uh, of the tank surface can be covered. And the panels are standard size, one meter by three meter long. Uh, whatever the tank capacity is, and which enable to have a, a standard installation process. Uh, this also means that the membrane system has no theoretical limit of capacity. The, the tank design limitation come from the uh, outer work, uh, outer tank structure. It can, can be due to uh, geotechnical or seismic aspects, but uh, not from the membrane itself. So storage capacity for membrane tank can go easily up to 300,000 cubic. Uh, I will rapidly go through main advantages, but uh, do this rapidly as we already presented them uh, during uh, our last webinar session that was uh, last, last April. Uh, so if you want to learn more, uh, okay, you can have a look to uh, this, uh, um, so to the replay of this webinar. Uh, of course, you can ask us, we will answer. But so to, to resume, um, we have uh, the first uh, advantages will be the ability to propose uh, 10 to 25 percent volume efficiency uh, for the same footprint compared to a 9 percent nickel tank. So 10 percent is due to optimized insulation thickness, 
and uh, and the possibility and the, and then we have the possibility to have a SEMP, a SEMP pit, which is uh, uh, dramatically reducing the minimum filling level of the tank. So this this is why we can go up to twenty five percent more net volume uh, comparing to nine percent liquid tanks. We um, also um, have a significant reduction of metallic component used in the tank. At, we are about 40% less metal used in, the, in total in the tank. And this leads us to our third point, uh, with, which is a reduced impact on the uh, environmental aspects. So through a study with an expert uh, in the estimation of this uh, kind of impact, we estimated a 23% reduction of impact for a large tank built in China. So that was uh, the first introduction. I will now let Edouard present you the main part of this webinar, uh, which is the uh, agent peak shaving energy tank project which you can see here a picture of the inside of it with some of the girls and guys that participate in each construction. So Edouard, I'll let you the floor. Thank you, Marie. Um, it is an honor and also pleasure for me to present you all this project. Um, uh, actually, today we will have uh, many photos and contents to present, so we will go with uh, a slightly faster pace. So uh, next page, please, Emery. So the project is uh, first of kind in China um, that successfully implemented uh, GTT state-of-art onshore memory technology for energy storage. Uh, this project uh, is located in Hejian city, um, which is north part of China. The project owner is Huagong Gas Group. Um, the EPC is CPECC North China. Uh, Hunong Zhonghua Shipyard uh, is the containment system outfitter. Next page, please. So today we will have a, a, a recap uh, of this project development in stages of uh, engineering, procurement, construction, commissioning, and operation. Particularly for the construction phases, we will highlight uh, steps that are special to memory tank technology. Uh, for example, uh, we will see uh, the moisture barrier application, the containment system outfitting, including bonding and welding, um, and global tightness test. For commissioning, we will briefly address what GTT site team will check um, on site, special to the membrane tank. And uh, lastly, we will present um, some of the monitoring results for this tank. Uh, since the tank has been uh, operated uh, in more than one month. Okay, so Hojian project is a peak shaving station that uh, mainly functions to supply uh, the regasified RNG to surrounding cities uh, throughout network pipelines. So we listed some uh, key design and criteria uh, for the containment system design. Um, the storage capacity is uh, always the basis to determine the tank geometry. Um, for this project, we try to keep the normal spec ratio close to 0 0.5. Uh, boil off rate BOR uh, is the key criteria to determine the insulating panel thickness um, and the seismic um, intensity um, is important to determine uh, both thickness and the density of the insulating panel. We need to clarify that for membrane tank, um, GTT and the EPC uh, working as one team to produce the engineering work. So we have a table list here um, to clearly showing um, the engineering scope split between GTT and EPC. Essentially, uh, GTT is responsible for uh, all the inner tank um, containment system and structure engineering, while the EPC is responsible for the outer tank. 
Um, there are some interfaces between uh, GDT and EPC, such as insert structures uh, into the concrete uh, and nitrogen system, which we will show uh, some photos later. Next slide, please. Okay. So for the containment system, uh, all material suppliers are uh, required to be qualified by GDT. Uh, this actually adds the value to client that all the containment system materials shall be well quality checked uh, by GDT representatives uh, during a, a home location production. We can see the list of uh, material takeoff for GST here. Um, recently, the GTT supply chain grows very fast, particularly in China, uh, which we believe soon um, it will reach the cost down um, in procurement cost uh, to build the next uh, GST tanks. Next slide. We will talk, uh, we will start to walk through uh, this project from uh, um, each key construction steps. So for the tank uh, constructions always start from uh, the land treatment and the uh, foundation. So uh, Hojian uh, GST tank is designed um, as above ground type uh, with pile foundation. So the left photo shows uh, the pile construction. Uh, totally, we have 144 piles installed. The right photo shows uh, the slab construction that including uh, the rebar installation and concrete pouring. Hergen is uh, located at the high seismic zone. Usually the isolation pads are needed to resist uh, the seismic loads for example, uh, for the Nipsonic tank. But thanks to uh, two membrane tank features, uh, number one is lightweight. Number two is the inner tank is integrated with outer tank and will slide together in the seismic condition. So no isolation pads needed for this project. Uh, that save costs and also the construction schedule. Next one. The membrane tank, uh, the outer tank is uh, almost the same as a knife cynical tank. So um, the difference uh, we highlight here is we compare the quantity and the weight of the pre-stressing um, and the rebars. Um, it is estimated for membrane tank, um, uh, the value is about 5% to 10% more um, compared to knife cynical tank. Um, does the cost uh, slightly increase for the outer tank, but uh, it's negligible uh, compared to the total cost of the tank. And uh, the photos showing here, the first line photos show uh, the outer tank and the roof concrete pouring. Um, and after the outer tank uh, concrete constructed, the roof will be uh, lifted. So uh, the roof airlifting method for the membrane tank um, from the experience um, is exactly the same uh, as, as Nipe Syndical tank. Next one. Okay, we mentioned previously for the membrane tank, there are some interfaces uh, between uh, the inner and outer tanks um, that uh, required pre-installed. Uh, during the outer tank uh, concrete uh, construction. So one major work is uh, anchor plates for the secondary and the primary ends. Uh, we call it uh, SE and a PE. So the GSD tank has its technology advantage that the installation space are fully closed. That allow detection uh, of methane if there is a leak from the inner tank. Uh, which Nipe Cynical tank do not have this feature, um, while the installation space are filled with methane boil of gas. To achieve uh, the installation space closing, we need to firstly pre-install the SE and the P anchor plates, which uh, we show here, um, pictures uh, A for the CE, 
and the B for the P on the top. Um, additionally, for the nitrogen system we mentioned before, we need to pre-install uh, the insert plate and the nitrogen piping inside the tank wall. So we can see the picture C is the uh, insert plate for nitrogen piping um, at the bottom. Um, and also D, we can actually see the nitrogen piping inside uh, the tank wall before concrete pouring. So uh, all the nitrogen piping will be routed onto the tank top um, and finally be integrated into the nitrogen process system. Okay. Um, after the outer tank and the roof construction, uh, we enter the next step um, is to build uh, the vapor barrier, uh, similar as Nipes and Nickel tank. Um, as mentioned by Emery before, the difference um, is the materials used for both technology is different. Um, Nipes Nickel uses carbon steel liner, while Membrane Tank invented uh, the polymer coating system. The application of uh, most barrier is like um, we define wall painting uh, for home decoration. Um, however, to achieve a good uh, moisture barrier, we need to perform some treatment on the concrete surface. So first, um, some major cracks defects of the concrete surface need to be repaired. And uh, secondly, uh, the roughness uh, level of the concrete surface needs to be needs to be reached. So once the moisture barrier coating is applied, we do some tests uh, like pore test, dry fume thickness measurement, etc. Um, and from these photos, one also to mention is uh, like picture photo B, uh, we use the gondola um, to spray the polymer coating in two layers um, to construct uh, the moisture barrier uh, on the wall. And the bottom will be the same, will be covered all with the moisture barrier. Next slide. Okay, so uh, after moisture barrier application for hydro test, um, it is uh, part of the code requirement for memory tank. Uh, it shall be performed to check uh, outer tank its structure integrity, as well as the tank sediment. So for this project, uh, the tank size is small and uh, more, uh, and also the project is uh, uh, in the city. So we use uh, fresh water for hydro testing. So after hydro testing, not much work uh, for the cleaning. Uh, we can quickly go through the next step. Okay, so the kickoff of the containment system outfitting starts with uh, the marking out. Um, the photo A, we can see that the GTD site team um, is actually checking um, with the team um, use the high accuracy laser scanner to measure and report the geometry of the tank. The purpose of uh, marking out is to define exact position of each uh, insulating panels uh, to be installed. Uh, GTD also has uh, an in-house software to post-process these record data, uh, which is showing uh, photo C. Uh, the outputs of the software will instruct uh, the site team for flatness correction. So we use plywood wedge and the uh, mastic to adjust the flatness. Following the marking out, the worker uh, will install the fastener, um, which functions to assist uh, positioning uh, the insulating panel. Um, the photo D shows a worker is testing the tightness of the fastener uh, using vacuum box. Okay. Um, after marking out and fastness installation, we start to install um, insulating panels both on the bottom and wall. So for Hergen uh, 29K project, um, it is about 5,000 pieces um, insulating panels, um, including the central panels, 
flat panels um, and corner panels, etc. We can see from uh, picture A um, that shows the very first piece uh, at tank bottom center um, installed. Um, and the picture uh, F, we can see some corner piece uh, installed. Um, pictures B and C are shown for insulating panel installation onto the tank wall. So for Hergen project, uh, the tank height is about 24 meter. Uh, we use two platform gondola with a stabilization system to install the panels um, above the height uh, five meter. The, the photo shows uh, uh, the panel um, being uh, appended, lifted, and located to its position uh, at wall, uh, then installed. The thermal corner protection system, um, as mentioned by me before, is required for containment um, tank system as per the latest code requirement. So for GSD membrane tank, uh, GTT invented um, a composite material of uh, glass cloth um, and aluminum thin sheet glued together. So we call it rigid uh, secondary barrier, uh, RSP, and the flexible secondary barrier, FSB. So RSB is uh, prefabricated as part of the insulating panel in factory. Um, at site, the workers need to bond um, FSB onto RSB to achieve full coverage of thermal corner protection five meter below and tank bottom. So the left photo here, we can see um, the automatic bonding machine. Uh, applying FSB um, and the photo in the middle, we can see the workers uh, performing the manual bonding. Um, GTT do not qualify the construction companies for bonding work, but uh, we qualify uh, the workers and the procedure. And uh, for sensitive areas such as uh, crossing section, uh, the test company um, should check the bonding tightness using the vacuum box, which we can show from uh, the picture C. Um, and uh, the bonding activity is quite special for uh, the GSD membrane tank, which is not uh, uh, which is not seen for uh, Nipes nickel tank. Next one, please. After bonding. Um, the most important um, and also critical uh, construction work is uh, membrane sheet welding. So for Hardian, we have about uh, 4,000 meter weld length in total, and 80% we can do automatic welding. Um, here we see some nice photos showing. Um, we'll pick some ones that uh, of most interest. So the photo B, we can see two gondola. One is uh, climbing at the very top, um, and the one is resting on the floor. So for uh, the memory sheet, the uh, wall axis, uh, again, we use the two platform gondola uh, to perform um, the memory sheet outfitting uh, for five meter and above. And the picture C is quite interesting. Um, this area shows uh, the primary barrier end. Um, it can be clearly shown that the top uh, of the containment system uh, inside the tank uh, is closed. Then uh, no boil off gas uh, will be allowed to enter into the insertion space uh, during operation. Um, and uh, picture E, we can see some many welding, um, and also uh, uh, the picture F, we can see the automatic welding machine that is doing the automatic welding. So GTT is very careful about the, uh, the welding um, activities, uh, same as bonding, but uh, to some extent even more um, careful since uh, membrane sheet is the first barrier, uh, we call the primary barrier to contain 
the RNG during operation. Thus, the weld quality and tightness is very important. Same as bonding, we qualify welders and uh, welding procedures. Um, on the daily basis, GTT site team uh, will inspect uh, the welding machines um, and the weld qualities. Uh, we also work with test companies to witness uh, the vacuum box, vacuum box tests and uh, the DBT, uh, dye penetration test, to assure um, that the, the welding, uh, welding works uh, is in uh, good quality on a daily basis. Okay. Um, and then uh, ammonia tests uh, is also required by uh, uh, industry uh, and the standards uh, for the onshore membrane tank. So the objective of these tests is to ensure that all welds should be visually checked um, with no leakage uh, or identifying the leaks. Here is what we do. So we apply special paintings on all welds, um, like the photos showing here, the yellow sections. Then we inject the ammonia uh, nitrogen mixed gas into the insulating spaces. Uh, from the injection points, it can be uh, from nitrogen system on the top, uh, and also uh, some new injection points on the bottom. To ensure the complete injection of ammonia gas inside uh, or into the installation space, uh, several test points uh, preset uh, for observation uh, will be, uh, will be uh, uh, pre-installed which we can show from uh, uh, picture F. Um, so if there is a leak at or through primary barrier, um, these painting will turn color from yellow to blue. So uh, from uh, picture E, we can see a blue dot, meaning that uh, this area uh, or this section uh, has, a, has a leak. But this is the uh, pre preset uh, area for observation, uh, which is in the middle of uh, the memory sheet. Okay, so after the test, the ammonia uh, inside the installing space shall be rinsed off uh, to a certain low concentration level, then allowing to repair the leak points. Okay, next one, please. There are a few other uh, construction activities related to membrane tank containment system, which I will quickly go through. Um, picture B shows uh, the insulating materials being stored on the suspended deck uh, to assure the BOR of the containment system, GTT will review um, the supplier, uh, the installation uh, material supplier um, product sheet. Um, and uh, picture C and D show the pop column and the base installed. So for Hojian, um, we designed a bundle structure, uh, which allows the self-support uh, to group uh, the pump columns together uh, and install at once. Um, and the picture E shows the side, uh, side door closing. So um, once the side door closed, uh, we will undergo the motion barrier, the insulating panel, uh, and the memory sheet uh, outfitting. So the same as the other areas. Um, but we will check locally for each steps uh, by doing the test. From this slide, um, picture A shows um, the temperature sensor installed on the concrete surface. So for GST, uh, the temperature sensors are actually installed in several positions, um, such as concrete surface, uh, second barrier, uh, which is normally in between uh, the insulating panels, um, and a primary barrier, um, which is uh, hidden at the back of the membrane sheet. Um, and the picture B shows the electric cables uh, routed um, on the insulating panel surface. Um, and again, uh, these cables will be uh, hidden um, at the back of the membrane sheets, uh, actually inside the corrugation of the membrane sheets. 
So uh, these uh, sensible equipment, the sensors and the cables uh, can be physically protected by the memory sheet uh, during a lifetime in service. And one specialty for GST memory tank is to require uh, a relatively comfortable work environment, but uh, this is more for the glue type of uh, activity, uh, work activity. So we control the temperature uh, and humidity. Uh, normally for the temperature is around uh, 15 degrees C to 30 degrees C. And the humidity is controlled less than 65%. So photos we show here, um, photos C, we see the, the HVAC um, installed on the top and also uh, the vent ventilation pipes uh, routing. And uh, D we see uh, it's quite small, but the green, uh, the green pipes, um, these are the pipes uh, penetrate from, uh, from the top uh, into the tank. Uh, to ensure that uh, uh, the heat or cold air or fresh air um, can be supplied uh, into the tank. And uh, the photo, uh, the picture E shows the uh, the uh, humidifier. So during construction phase, we always have equipment to, to monitor the temperature and humidity at all times. And uh, thanks for this uh, technology, the workers uh, uh, are for sure happy to uh, walk inside a tank during the, especially summer and winter time. Okay. Um, for commissioning, uh, GTD commissioning engineer is uh, always present to assist the site commission team to mainly check um, uh, which is special to memory tank is nitrogen system. So we have a punch list that show the samples here um, so GTD team will check uh, the nitrogen system uh, by checking the gas detection uh, or gas sampling system, um, pressure safety valves, nitrogen piping routing and insulation, etc. Um, photos showing here um, are the valve groups uh, on the tank top. Uh, these are the identical to uh, the engineering PNID. Um, so the team would uh, try to control uh, open and close uh, the valves to simulate operation modes, um, including the uh, uh, two modes we designed, the breathing mode for the normal operation and the scouring mode if uh, uh, there detects a leak from a primary barrier. Next slide, please. Okay, so uh, we are very proud um, to announce that um, the Hergen GST tank um, is a success, has now been operated for more than one month. So uh, the operators, uh, Huagong Gas, uh, monitor the tank performance on a daily basis from a control room. Also, we uh, use a portable gas detection system to check the gas concentration um, inside uh, insulating space from uh, time to time. So both uh, methods show no detection of methane uh, has been observed during uh, operation, which meaning that um, the system is uh, perfectly tight. Okay, so last slide for project. So um, it is a great appreciation to the teams involved in this project um, to build this uh, very first membrane tank uh, using GTD technology in China uh, with success. So we made a nice project video, uh, which is posted both on YouTube and WeChat. Here are the links. Um, we hope uh, after the webinar, um, you can find it and enjoy. Okay, so thank you all for listening, Emery. I, I leave the next sessions to you. Thank you, Edward. Um, so thanks, Edward, for this uh, very detailed and very illustrated presentation. Uh, before moving to our conclusion, I'd like to address uh, you some few words about uh, other projects uh, and uh, some technology improvement we're working on. So the project 
I'm referring to is the Tianjin regasification terminal, which is being built in China for BGG. Uh, we're talking here of total of 10 tanks, 10 large tanks, which are built in uh, three phases. And it's also a, a jetty and a packing distribution network that is being built. So it's an important project. First phase of this uh, project includes two tanks uh, with a 9% nickel technology and two tanks with a GST technology. Uh, four tanks have the same footprint. However, tank capacity are different because uh, GST technology proposed to have a 220,000 cubic meter, whereas 9% nickel tanks are 200,000 cubic meter only. So it's, uh, this illustrates uh, the, what I mentioned previously about the 10% more volume you can have uh, in a tank due to uh, the technology. Um, so you can see uh, on the different picture, uh, uh, the, the, the site, uh, you can see on the back of the picture, the four first phase one tanks, two 9% nickel and two uh, GST tanks. So, and we can, and the next six tanks are, uh, have been decided to be also with the GST technology. So technically the first two tanks are completed. Uh, I'm talking about the two first uh, GST tanks, and we are waiting for uh, the official ceremony to be taking place very soon, uh, well, at least once the COVID situation enables it. And the uh, terminal should be commissioned uh, beginning of next year. So uh, that's uh, pretty soon. Uh, GTT is constantly innovating uh, to optimize its technology and uh, to improve them. And it has been the case for the energy carrier technologies through the evolution to become, we enable them to become more and more efficient and competitive. And it also will be the case for the land storage. Uh, for this first application, GST has already benefited from recent improvements, such as we have optimized some, some form densities. We have uh, optimized the number of uh, 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 fixing elements, such as studs, uh, mastic quantities also. Uh, and for other cost and, per and performance improvement, we are working on uh, bi density form panels. So, in order to optimize uh, form density and, uh, and reduce this density, taking advantage of the cold condition inside the tank. Uh, so, this uh, improvement will uh, now be available for uh, next coming uh, studies and project we will work on. This will enable to save costs on the procurement and uh, also enable to save uh, uh, or to reduce boiler freight if it's necessary. Uh, the market uh, of onshore and also offshore activities is increasing. So we are also working uh, to, uh, to certify new suppliers on this market in order to, to be able to guarantee the best price on the membrane components. And so that's are some of the incentives we are working on uh, to, to show you that we are continuing optimization of GST uh, in order to always uh, increase uh, the reliability and the competitiveness. Finally, uh, I'd like to introduce you uh, a new concept, just one slide uh, to talk about the uh, modular GST tank. It consists in a, a limited tank size with a um, metallic structure. Uh, and uh, pre-outfitted uh, pre with GST inside. Uh, if we talk here you know, of uh, limited size, it's because the idea is to um, prefabricate them and transport them through the final, to the final destination through uh, floating barges. Uh, so we've performed studies uh, with shipping, shipping uh, Activities in order to and we demonstrate that we can uh, transfer uh, in one row three tank and uh, up to 45,000 cubic meters. So, this, opt this solution optimizes uh, uh, costs uh, for uh, an, uh, an enable to propose solution for uh, remote and high labor cost areas. For, an example of, could be that uh, we can build these kind of tanks in, in, in China, where there are already uh, trained people with this uh, to, to build this technology, and then 
send them to elsewhere, so example, USA or Canada. So this brings us to the end of our presentation. Uh, so I'd just like to, uh, to share with you a rapid wrap up. So first, we're very happy to share uh, with you the six-fold delivery and commissioning of this 29,000 cubic meter tank in the Agent City. This demonstrates the ability of GST to match efficiently uh, project requirements. Uh, then secondly, to keep in mind that GST is able to store 10% up to 25% more LNG thanks to uh, in the same footprint, and that, um, and we can uh, achieve tank up to three hundred thousand cubic meter tank volume. Uh, third point is that uh, GST enable to reduce uh, by twenty three percent the environmental impact, and uh, and uh, also GTT innovation continues working to improve the cost and competitiveness of solutions through technical evolution and the process or procurement aspects. We presented here the first delivery of this new generation uh, of uh, GST, but uh, there are also eight more to come, uh, as I mentioned just before. So there are two, uh, two uh, already finished and should be pretty soon commissioned, and uh, six more to come by uh, uh, up to 2024. So stay tuned on our next webinar. Uh, to learn more about this uh, significant project. So now we will uh, answering uh, the question. I can see we have some already. Uh, we will launch the poll session. We have some questions to propose to you that you can answer during. Uh, we go through the different question we have received. And I will put back. Camera, okay. <laughs> um, so let me look. So we have a question uh, dealing with the um, requirement on is it required to regular survey uh, inside GST tanks? What, five years or whatever? Uh, you want to answer this one, Edward? Yeah, sure, sure. Well, uh, the short answer uh, to the question is no. So um, usually for downshot tank uh, the design uh, intent is not to open a tank um, for a lifetime, like 40 or 50 years. But um, that uh, is unlike um, um, the orange carrier, the ships. Uh, which normally we do the five-year uh, inspection, uh, open the tank uh, to see its uh, integrity. Uh, but uh, this is also a good question because we have uh, previously mentioned, uh, like my background, um, this is uh, actually the, the, the two uh, membrane tank uh, built in uh, the 1980s um, in Montois. Uh, France. So the tanks uh, are previously uh, uh, opened uh, for the intent, uh, the life extension. Um, so by doing that, uh, the containment system was proved to be uh, uh, perfect. Um, no repairs uh, needed. Um, so there is some uh, track record or some evidence that if the operators um, has uh, this intent to to open a tank um, for extension, for example, life extension, uh, to check inside, um, also for some uh, the fireworks on the uh, uh, like the repair the welds and pipelines on top of the tank, then the, the membrane tank has the only solution. Um, to the operator or to the owner that can be opened. Um, this is uh, uh, cannot be competed by the lab cynical tank. Okay. okay. Um, I can see. Another. Let's see. Let's see more questions. Yeah. Um, well, some of the questions are quite tricky. Um, not easy to answer immediately. 
Yeah, there is one which is about the, um, so why hasn't industry applied this type of LNG on shore tank uh, construction earlier? Uh, okay. well, so uh, we can try to answer this one. It's um, uh, the, the all previous tank builds we mentioned uh, were built without uh, tank corner protection. And uh, without having this tank corner protection, we need to have uh, external dikes or other protection. It was not a full containment technology. Uh, so this, the upgrade adding this tank corner protection has been done in around 20, uh, yeah, to, to 2010, around this time. Uh, so since then, we are uh, equivalent to 9% nickel technology. But at that time, 9% technology was already having the market. So since then, we are uh, working to propose uh, this technology. Uh, even if it's have a lot of advantages, it's not so easy to, to change uh, so, the edits. Yeah. So, so a few points to add is, uh, you know, um, we, we have some statistics uh, for the energy tanks um it is indeed true that nipes nico is uh, uh, have more market share i think we have about 500 uh, units um all over the world but uh, uh bear in mind um the membrane tank um also uh, over 100 units um uh, but mainly um in the past uh the in-ground uh, tanks are uh, pretty much all the membrane tanks. So uh, the techni technology itself uh, is mature. Why uh, Nipes Nickel uh, tanks growing faster um, than the membrane tank? Um, this has many reasons, um, but as we see, uh, one of them is um, for membrane tank, um, we will have uh, the dedicated supply supply chain, uh, which is good for the for the owner for the operator because uh, material suppliers have been uh, uh, all qualified uh, with a very high standard to produce and supply the materials, uh, but needs to be more diversified. Um, so why uh, the project the membrane tank technology being successful? Uh, now is because uh, GDT making a great effort to uh, grow uh, the supply chain in the past uh, many years, a uh, few years. Um, then we see that uh, with the established supply chain, um, the cost, uh, which is of most interest for most of the investors and owners, um, is the key. Um, we can see for the large tanks, uh, particularly the orange tanks, uh, the cost um, between the uh, uh, membrane tank and knife nickel are um, almost equivalent. Um, and to some extent, the membrane tank is uh, even more attractive in, in cost and schedule. So there's something to share. Okay. okay. Uh... So... Yeah, so a question about uh, will this will this, this presentation will circulate? So the so webinar is recorded, and so you you will have access to the recording. So, but the PowerPoint will not be shared, but you you can see through the recording. Okay. Um, a question about what are the main difference between the onshore tanks and the ship uh, ship tank? Uh, so is in fact it, we can see the same component inside of the insulation. So the spoilate and foam, primary membrane is made of stainless steel, and it is exactly the same membrane. Uh, it's it's arranged differently, you can say, and it's adapted to to the requirement of each market. So we are using the same components, same way of uh, erection, but adapting to to the the. To the requirement. So, for onshore, for example, we are using uh, less density foam because there are less pressure, there are no slushing impact, etc. 
Um, so it's a question of just adapting to the to to, to the requirement uh, and to the different uh, loads uh, on these different projects. It's the same components. And uh, Emory, I can take the, the next one is what are your opinions on the high steel materials used in recent years? So again, mm -hmm. it is a very interesting question. Um, even for the ships, uh, the high magnesium uh, steel um, tanks, uh, I would say competitor to uh, the membrane tank and also for uh, different types of uh, the energy tanks. So um, the key challenge uh, is the welding uh, for the high magnesium steel materials. So it's a uh, it's a big topic to 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 talk about. Um, but uh, as far as uh, well, at least in China, um, the uh, uh, research is ongoing, but um, there's no uh, proven project. Uh, to build the uh, high magnesium steel uh, LNG tanks. So uh, this is what I can share. Okay. Uh, I can take the next one. This next one is, uh, do you have heat ingress estimation in compare with regular uh, shore storage? Uh, and is your calculation confirmed during operation? So uh, yes, we have uh, Accurate estimation of uh, heat ingress inside of the tank, of course, is part of uh, uh, delivery during uh, projects. Uh, and uh, we have a large experience in that because it's made for every vessel. And for every vessel we, we deliver, uh, there is um, a, a close monitoring of the performance. and. Uh, we analyze from the performance of the vessel if we comply with what we have calculated. So we are pretty used to do this. And uh, so we, as uh, the tank has just been delivered, it's not uh, yet uh, checked, but uh, uh, we are pretty confident that uh, we will uh, manage uh, and, uh, to achieve the boil off uh, we have announced. Okay, very well. Emery. Um, I think we're okay with the questions. Okay. Uh, very good. We, yeah, maybe we can go to, to the pool. Just, uh, yeah, sharing the results. So you should now be able to see. Um, the first question was uh, for you, for what aspects are the most important for the onshore tank technology selection? Uh, so it was a multiple choice and the idea was to select two items. So we can see that cost come first with 60% uh, answer. And the second one is safety in operation which uh, we can understand. So we clearly understand these two first, uh, to come in first. And uh, quite surprising that to see that the third one with 33% in the answer is the environmental footprint. Okay, but good to see uh, that uh, it's uh, something of importance. And then of course, uh, schedule and uh, most permitting is coming uh, at the end with only 5% in the answer. So, okay, cost, we can imagine and we understand why, of course, uh, it comes first. And uh, interesting to see that environmental footprint also uh, is of important. Uh, second question, how soon do you see membrane tank to be as strong competitors to 9% nickel? So the idea is to get your, your incentive on that. Uh, so most of the answer shows that it's, uh, it can will it will come in a short run. So good to see and good to hear that. <laughs> we also hope so. Uh, well, now on we hope that we will be uh, 
of course able to compete uh, in the different uh, projects that are going, going to, to come. Uh, so very, very pleased to see that we believe that uh, it will come in a short run. Uh, and third question, do you see that uh, this first GST tank delivery as a game changer for future onshore tank project? So, um, ah, it's very, very, so the two first, which are yes, uh, decision maker will more uh, seriously consider GST. And uh, the second, which is yes, but only after uh, ongoing other projects. So uh, the changing project we were mentioning, uh, both are just um, at the same level, about 50%. So, so Emery, I don't know what you feel, but uh, it's very encouraging to me, meaning that we need to work harder. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> to bring yeah. the, the value to, to, to customers, to industry, and uh, uh, to the co, co colleagues. Yeah, I think uh, we, will, uh, con we shall continue our uh, good work doing and uh, making this project coming on a, a success and visibly should, should enable to, to go with more projects. So it has been good to hear from you. We hope we answer all your questions. Uh, uh, and if you don't have seen it all, you can uh, have the replay or can see the next session, which is uh, on Thursday. Uh, so we say uh, goodbye to you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, bye. See you next time. Yes, you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Emery. Thank you.